Okay, so we have um, all the elements for making a um, pocket accordion book out of envelopes and um, I've already pre-cut these pieces. I did have a sample but I will just insert a photo of it here for you so you can see the finished product but I already sent that away to somebody so I um, actually will put it in later but anyway these are the pieces we've got two pieces of corrugated card we have the number of envelopes you can have as many as you want mine originally had my last one had five in it I think there's seven there a little bit of ribbon to close your book uh, this is just um, as you can see pre-loved uh, paper that can act as the inside lining and this is the paper that I'm going to use as a cover this time just got a little bit of a sheen to it and so that'll go on the outside so as you can see I've already got these things ready and then we have things like washi tape just to put a border and a trim on things as well I have a glue stick and I also have PVA if, if I want it. Sometimes I prefer that, that one because this can get pretty dry and hard and then it just tears the papers which I don't want. But for things that are uh, hardy like this then that's good. Now see how one side has more, the, the ridges are more obvious and this side is smoother so um, I didn't think about that when I did it last time but this time I will actually make sure I have the smoother side on the outside the other thing I didn't think of last time was I put the ribbon on the opening side but what I would like to do this time is actually put it on the the binding side and um, just have it long enough to go around like I did last time but so that it opens on this side not the other okay so the first thing we want to do is make some pieces like this so I'm just going to cut well I'm just going to cut sorry about that this um, this piece straight down the middle because I just want the two sides of an A4 the two an A5 is the right size so get my middle ruler oops so if we just have a look along here should be 29.7 which is the standard A4 size pencil it's a handy drawer this one isn't it okay so half of 29 would be 14 and a half and then we've got another 0.7 so let's go 14 just over 14.3 so right there all right now I don't have to put a um, a mark at the bottom because what I can just do is just line it up on this mat here make sure it's flush and then I can just cut straight down that line like that alright now I just want to make a, a little disclaimer here I'm not um, I haven't done a lot of videos of making things so um, yeah just bear that in mind when you think of what I'm doing all right <laughs> so have mercy okay so um, I think it'd be nice to actually paint PVA on there and give it a nice smooth finish Hold on. yes see I have a couple of these harder more acrylic brushes that I don't use these for watercolor oh, can't get to it go that's it so I'll just take this one out I have a very small space and so everything is at very close quarters most things are within arm's reach <laughs> of where I'm sitting okay just all right so this is the smooth side I've got a little bit of paper towel here for wiping it on so what I'm going to do is just actually pour some PVA if I can get it to come out obviously probably will blow out in a minute I've got a, I must have a little block in there it's convenient isn't it done I'll have to clean that out but in the meantime we will just take the lid off and help ourselves from there 
Okay, so I'm just going to put that on like that. Much better if it just rolls out. Okay. That's better. Okay, now bear in mind too if you use PVA that you've got to allow drying time because it's um, obviously a lot more moist than the other kind. Just put that bit on there. Alright, so I'm going to turn that over and center it on that piece just by sight. Not, not worrying about, um, you know, as long as I can fold my edges over so that it sits like that. That's much better than the last one I did. The last one I did had the, the corrugated lines in it. Not that that is a problem. I mean, if you like that, it just looks, you can tell where it, what sort of board is under it, which isn't bad, but I just thought it might be nice to have a smooth finish. So let's just do this one. Oops. <laughs> now that's an abundance. So I might actually put some of that just in here because I'm not going to need all that on there. It's just going to make it wet. All right. Okay, so let's just spread it out. I should have some photos already um, done, hope, <laughs> of the pieces. I think I already took them. Let's hope so. Um, that's the thing. That's what I mean about never having done it before. It, you know, you, there's things that you forget. You don't do it in the right order. And then you think, oh, I should have done that. I should have done that. I should have done that. It does look like one of my pieces is slightly larger than the other, which means I was slightly off centre when I cut it. But that's okay. It, it will still work. You just need enough to be able to fold the edges over. And then you're going to place another piece of um, paper over it anyway, so that will actually hold it in place. Okay, so that's those two. All right. If you want to, like you can um, smooth it out more, but I think you'll find most of those ripples will just go as it dries because it's just the damp of the cardboard underneath, I think. Um, all right. So the next thing that I like to do is actually cut off the corners so that we have good folding, good folding, um, what do you call that, space so it's neat. <laughs> Maybe I should have used the, the um, glue stick. It is rippling quite a bit with the moisture. It's an interesting effect though, isn't it? This is the thing about art. Everything is happy accidents. And you, learn, you just learn how to deal with them. <laughs> And just go, yeah, it's a cool effect, hey. I do have an idea already. I could take a dry brush with um, like a, a, a shimmering kind of, I've got an iridescent medium. I'll show you. See like this? I've got an iridescent medium. So if I use a, a dry brush or a paper towel or something like that, I could perhaps put that effect on this side as well. And it'll help to, um, it'll enhance the finish rather, and rather than make the, um, the ripples look like a, de a detraction. Okay, so you just make the fault the feature. That's what you do. When you're making art, if something doesn't go quite the way you had planned, then make it a feature somehow and build around it. In fact, that's a, an exact principle for um, creativity, for creative thinking in general. You know, sometimes we get given a piece, we think that a pattern is working really well, then we get a piece that just doesn't fit and we go, oh, what am I going to do with that? <laughs> you know, it's sort of, and the thing is, unless you rearrange all your pieces to work around that piece, you're going to stop right there and get no further. So rather than get no further, let's just work with um, the, the change and adapt and make something unexpected and very cool. Okay, I'm just putting this glue in, finishing that off, getting it out of my way. 
and I'll have to clear that hole properly. Oops. Doesn't want to stand up. I always take care of my brushes pretty much straight away because things set quickly and if you don't then they won't be any good for anything else. So, and I need them good for painting. Alright. Okay, that's that. Put that over there. Alright, so now what we're going to do here is just get the glue stick and run it along. Just, I think I'd like some paper underneath. I don't really want it all over my mat. So, I have... I have some scrap paper. Mm -hmm. No, it doesn't matter. Okay, so go along there. As you can see, this glue is pretty um, hard. It does the job though, it still sticks down. So, that's the main thing. You can turn it on its side a little bit. Just be careful not to put your thing in the glue as you're turning it around. Okay, so what I'm going to do is actually put it on its side like that and get the edges. You can, uh, you can fold things too prior to gluing them. It's probably not a bad idea actually. Um, it's something that, you know, if you're making pop-ups and stuff, things like that, folding first is always a good idea because the quality of the fold is what holds everything together. So, um, and it'll keep it, it'll help it to glue down because it's already been bent back that way. So it would have been a good idea to um, do that before I actually glued anything. That's what I mean. See what I mean? I'm just... <laughs> I've only made this kind of book once before and I'm still refining the art. So, that's the second thing you can remember. Try folding first. Get your pieces, cut your pieces and then um, fold the edges. Okay, so that's what that one looks like. And um, I'm just going to do it up this way so that the whole thing doesn't go on there. Protect the face of the cover. It doesn't matter so much if the edges, other than making it messy, it doesn't matter so much if the edges get a little bit on it because that's going to be covered with something else glued on it anyway. So, fold. Now I just stuck my nail in there, so do bear in mind that this is just cardboard, so it can, you know, you can pierce it quite easily, which is really good if you want to use it for, you know, book binding and things like that. It makes it so easy to work with. I actually really love working with this stuff when it comes to making books. I really like it. Okay, so that's both covers. See the little, that's actually quite a nice effect, don't you think? It looks like an embossing. I'm not quite sure how it will look when it dries. Um, we'll, we will find out, but it, I think it's kind of nice. And you could, like I said, just dust over a dry brush with something that makes it shiny or gives it a distressed kind of look. That, um, which could be fun. Alright, so I'm just going to put those aside for a second. What I need to do is use an envelope to make um, a piece that covers inside. So we want something that's just slightly bigger than the envelope. Okay, and that's where I bring my very ratty recycled paper, um, which is, if that's fine too, like you can iron it if you want to get the ripples out of it. I find once you glue it down, doesn't seem to make a whole lot of difference. And I do, li I, I actually like the look of something that's been recycled. So, to me, kind of, I like, it's, it doesn't matter. But some people, you know, they like to keep it a little bit more pristine. So I'm just going to go with that much edge. Alright. Just make it about there. And we'll go about here. Alright. Now just so you know, in Queensland where I am right now, it's really hot. And even though it's um, overcast today, 
uh, it's very humid. Oops, which is why my finger, my finger just put sweat on the card. Um, oh, that's a bit bigger. We don't have to go quite that wide. Okay, we can kind of. The thing is, we can trim it down once we see how it fits on the thing. But in some ways, it's easier. You know how they say, measure once, cut twice. Uh, <laughs> measure twice, cut once. I almost said that wrong, didn't I? Living example of the other kind. Measure once, cut twice. Um, but anyway, so we can just take this. Uh, you can use pretty paper. You can, you don't have to use recycled paper like me. I just like it this way. I, I like to make stuff from what I've got around, you know. So um, that's just one particular thing about the way that I work. Um, I think I get a certain amount of satisfaction in being able to take something that um, is nothing really, or is about to, you know, become useless or thrown away, and and do something with it. You know, so put that over there. So this we can. This one's not too bad. This one's obviously got a few wrinkles in it, doesn't it? But it's not easy for me to get to an iron right now. I live in a very compact place. Okay, so that's got plenty of room to be cut down, which is fine because I'd rather it was too big than too small. And then this one I think might be even bigger still. Yep. So we can turn that over. We actually want to make it a bit smaller, so I can use this, just push it. See how I do that with it, that way I've got, it's going to cut off a little bit extra down there and a little bit extra on the side. And then I'll use that as the template for the other one. Now I can square it up if I need to. You can see this, this isn't fine art, you know what I mean? But it's cool art, and the people that get it love it. And if I was keeping it myself, I would love it. Okay. So now don't be concerned about those edges showing because we will actually put washi tape. Da da! Washi tape over the top. So I can actually bring it in a little bit further, I think. I am going to bring it in a little bit further. Because the washi tape will actually make up that difference. There's that line there. See what I mean about measure twice, cut once? <laughs> this is me. This is how I create. I'm not one of those really polished. Um, organized people and um, well I haven't only I've only done it once before that's why I'm still working out exactly how I want it to go I'm still working it out so yeah you don't have to be a wizard all this stuff bear that in mind okay so that's good like that I'll give you a little tip too you know sometimes I've done it before where if you would like your paper to have a kind of finish on it you can actually um, use PVA as a kind of lacquer so, just thinking I might go with this here, so I can see it better. Alright, just going to go straight down that side. This one. And straight down this side. And I only have a, um, a short... I don't have much of a sound card. I think it only does like 30 minutes at a time. So I will need to take it out and empty it and then come back. <laughs> but before that. Okay, so we've got these two ready. But before we can put these on, da -da, I do remember something before it's too late. We will actually need to f make get some ribbon. So I'm just don't have that much left in here. Time to get some more ribbon. Put that on my spotlight list. 
Yeah. It's got an interesting bend in it. I think we might actually have to use this whole thing, which is fine. So, because we want to, we're going to join it here, and then we want it to go all the way around and tied in a bow. So, yeah, we're going to need that whole lot. So, what we'll do is just cut that. Bows uh, ribbon does better if you cut it like on an angle or in a fork. You know how some how they used to do it in a f like a fork. Like a ch -ch. so even cutting it on an angle apparently helps. And another thing you can do, which I'm not going to do right now, is you can um, get a little lighter and just lightly bur burnish the ends so that they melt and don't fray. So that's a tip that I'm not going to do but letting you know about. Alright, so if I'm going to make, for example, just say this is my book. So this is the front cover and this is the back cover. Now if that's the case then I need to put the ribbon in the center like so. Just there. And the reason it's going there is because it's going to be held in place as well by the um, piece of paper that we put over. And I've put them side by side so that this really isn't good. I need to unplug this. So that um, they line up. So I'm just going to put that on there. And put it in place about there. All right, and this one, same thing on the other side. This is definitely a better option for fabrics. So, just to make a bit of room, I'm just going to put that, push that up a bit and put that on there. Make sure they go in far enough for the paper to cover and hold in place. Okay. <coughs> okay. <coughs> now we can just leave them to dry a little bit. Just trying to decide which kind of glue I'd like to Um, oh no, there's glue coming out. Ah, oh, okay. Needs a needs a flushing. Okay. I'm just gonna see if this glue is <laughs> worse than before. Uh, not helpful. Alright, well I'm going to actually pause this video here and we're going to let that dry for a second. And while it does, it's my bin down there, I'm going to unplug this glue. So I will be back in a minute. Okay, so I'm back. That didn't take long. And I fixed it. Yay! And I'm going to use... PVC I think. I just think it will uh, endure better. Um, so even though oops, got it. it does work, trust me. Even though it um, is moist ta -da! Um, I do it will hold better so I might use the PVA on the or PVA, PVC, whatever it is. There's part of my blockage there. Um, I might use that around the edges and just put some of the other stuff on um, the inside of the
see some of the still some of the dry glue that was stuck in there is still coming out. That's what happens when you leave it open. Because if you close it properly, it shouldn't do that, I don't think. If you close it after you use it, it shouldn't do that. Alright, but like I said, I am going to um, put some of this on the inside. As I said, you know, I have very compact space. I don't have a lot of room. But that's okay because you guys can't see past a certain point anyway, so not much point in having more space really as far as viewing goes, is there? Oops. Um, just making polite chit chat here. Okay, so this is my by the way, one of these ends up being covered anyway because it the last um one of the envelopes that you're putting as a page ends up going over the top. So <clears throat> one of them shows and one of them doesn't. But it's there and that's a good thing. It's kind of like when you put lining in something. Like years ago I made my kids these um, wonderful quilted lined Christmas stockings. They were big too and I embroidered their names on them and they were a big effort you know and it took me a couple to work out how to do the lining because at first I was sewing the lining to each half which isn't the way to do lining. You sew that you do lining together with the um, just like you do the outer material and then you attach it so that it turns right side out inside the the object that you're making. So it took me it's kind of like making these books. It took me a few to figure it out. Hey, but not to be daunted, I went on to do one for each of my five children and one for mum and dad because I was probably over it and didn't feel like doing two for us. <laughs> Besides, we're buying all the presents, you know, so it's not like the kids were only little. Okay, so they're done like that. Now I'm going to let them dry. What Then after, when we're ready, we'll just choose one of these washi tapes to put on there. I might actually go with these ones this time because I think, or this one, because this will pick up these but that's not going to be exposed on every page but this one will go with the outer, outer shell. The last one I did was this one because I had a um, more of a mauve um, cover. Anyway, so we're just going to leave those for a sec, put them over there and now <coughs> we are going to not use the one I sweated on <coughs> we're going to join a few envelopes. Now each one of these will become a page in this concertina book. Alright, so you open out the edge and you glue that one to that one. And you do that for however many pages you want. So there's one, two, three. Alright, and then I've got I've got six here. So I think I'll just go with the six. The last one I made only had five, so I think I'll just go with the six. And um, I'm going to do that and come back with them all joined together. But I'll do the first one just so that you can see how that looks. Um, what I'm going to do here is just glue, glue stick up that way. And obviously there's going to be some glue under there. So then I'm just going to put that, line it up. And put that on there. All right. So when they're done, that's that'll be one page, and this will be another, and they'll they'll work like that. And you can put cool stuff in here. All right. So I'm going to um, actually do the rest of those, and then I'll show you when that's done. Okay. So um, this is. You could actually make these books, I'm back by the way, you can actually make these books without anything else, just using the envelopes if you want. But, um, so you just open them up and they concertina out, okay, and what you can do is you can store your mail in them, so you can, this is just an idea of like a postcard, it just fits in there. If you've got a letter, let me see, what can I find to, um, to, to use? you go, just say, as an example, just say this was a letter, so you can put that inside there, 
and you can just store all your personal mail from somebody. You know, you could have an album for each one if you have a pen pal that you like to, you know, keep things in. I'm a bit, <laughs> a bit sentimental though. Like, see, I have this this one from a friend in the states, and that's the card there, and the envelope. This this envelope may actually be small enough to fit inside because I do like actually the envelopes with the stamps and everything as well so this one fits just like that which is cool not all of them will but that one does so that's that's groovy so that's that's how you use it now um, there is one little issue that I found when I was doing this another step that I missed if depending on how you want to do your book because when I did my last one um, this this part, that page, goes onto the inside cover, right? So that becomes your first page, like that, okay? But what I did with the last one is I actually put this, I actually put this inside underneath this, so it was like that, rather than, so you had this exposed and it, and it went over like that way. But because I haven't done that this time, I'm going to have to actually put that one there and I'll leave that flap can stay like that or you can just tuck it inside might be better or even underneath you could actually even do it that way glue it underneath so that it's not not visible at all that's probably a better idea and that way you don't have any of the covers exposed actually so but when you open your book it'll be like that see um, and then when it closes what it does is it wraps around this way like this, that one goes that way, that one goes that way, and then you can tie it on this side. And that's how it looks when it's finished. Okay, so just to get to that point, what we need to do is glue this one down, and I'm just going to use a glue stick. So um, if over time that doesn't hold as well, then whoever has the whoever has the book can actually <laughs> fix that by because I just don't think the the envelopes are um, I don't think the envelopes will cope so well with the PVC PVA whatever you want to call it. Um, so I will actually see that's the thing. Last time I actually did the washi tape first. But it was a bit of a different story, so I guess we're different, doing it differently this time. We can still do the washi tape, but um, yeah, this, the washi tape will still work fine. But it'll only have three sides. We won't do the inside there. But it's going to be the same on the back page, so it won't look out of place. And that's the beauty of these things, i got to say. It might look like I'm just a fool who doesn't know what she's doing. And there's a little bit of truth to that, because <laughs> it is it is a new, a new process for me. But... Um, I'm happy with playing with things, you know what I mean? So um, it doesn't bother me if I do it, make it up as I go, because that's kind of like how I'm used to rolling anyway, and that's that's creativity for you. You're just constantly adjusting to things that you need to do to make something work. And I'm going to pull that off and make use of that under there. Okay, and then just put this on there. Okay. So we just, sorry you probably can't see that, but I'm just pressing it down. That's all. So you can see it's actually really simple to make them, even if you make a ton of mistakes, as I have. <laughs> well, a ton of different things that I had intended to do anyway. Now, um, with the other one I had, I had a few little golden stickers and stuff that were quite nice and so I put one of those just here and I will probably do that with this one as well but just so okay so this is how it works it opens and then it concertinas out so you've got room for six one two three four five six different postcards or letters from somebody and I'm just going to get a sticker so you, we can put that oh I haven't done the washi tape either hold on a sec Okay, so final stages, I will point out that if you are going to do the washi tape, 
you do need to do it before you put your envelopes in or you do um, you do this the way that I did on the other book where you have the, the flap going in underneath because it, you can't really put the washi tape on very effectively with the envelopes already there. It doesn't matter so much on this one but um, yeah it doesn't work so well on the back. Even here, it's, I've got the same problem here um, to put it on. Yeah, so if you're going to do the washi tape, I recommend you do it before you put the, before you join the envelopes. Basically, just think of it in terms of finishing the. Um, I want the thick thick green strip down this side. Just think about it in terms of finishing the cover before you add the interior. That's what it comes down to and that way it makes perfect sense. Finish the cover before you um, before you add the interior. Okay, so that's what you gotta do if you wanna use washi tape. <laughs> and as you can see I um, do my corners this way so that um, far out so that I can join them up. Okay, and this tape, as it turns out, is almost exactly the same color as this, so you can't even see it when it comes over around the edge. Um, and because I want the wider one on the outside, uh, I try to make use of the, the, kind of the cards that I've already made but I did have to waste a few because I actually want the tape a certain way. See how that's like that. So that's not going to work. I need to do it this way. I'll have to just trim that. Go up to the end. Doesn't matter if it goes over because um, like I said it's the same color on the other side anyway. And I've already done the other side which I showed you before. But this is much more fiddly doing it after you've got the envelopes in, I can tell you. Because I did it the other way the first time. And it was a breeze. So um, I've got photos of that, that one that I'll include. But so we have to trim this. So that it goes down there. I'll just cut this one off. Mata, mata, mata. But you can see if you don't have make all the mistakes that I have done, and if you actually follow the, the pictures I did in the other one, except for this bit, um, you'll actually get it done quite easily and quickly. I think I need to clean my scissors. I've got glue and stuff on them. No. So yeah, there's that. And then if I want to, and I do, I will actually put, I don't know, I don't know who that is, but I'm not talking to him right now. Um, I think I will just put it down here just because it gives it a clean uniform finish, even though you won't really see. And then we'll just trim it at the end. Could probably have taken that all the way up, but anyway. Washi tape is so cool because I'd never heard of it before I went to the States. There are a lot of things I'd never heard of before I travelled back and forth from the States the last seven years. But in the time that I started, since the time in the time since I started traveling, a lot of these things are all here now, whereas I don't think they they necessarily were all here <laughs> before. Okay, so the book goes this way. Ta da! Alright, um, we just do this. Fold the. tie it in a bow. And this, this little book is going to be um, the competition prize for whoever 
actually um, sends the most snail mail, the most personal snail mail in the next month. So I will send it out to somebody by the 7th of January. Of course they have to, um, you know, like put pictures on my Facebook page of Learning with Lisa online. Um, actually I didn't want that, I wanted a, I wanted a bow. Concentrate. Um, now, do you think the big bow or the little bow? Um, well, here's one that's in between. That's what I want. The in between bow. I think, do those bits come out? No. I would have thought they did. They look like they should but I won't force it. No. Okay, so we're just going to put this right in the middle here so that people know it's the front of the book, it's not in the middle. That'd be right, wouldn't it? I'm just going to take that off for a sec so I can see what I'm doing. Okay. I think that'll work. Okay, so there's our our little concertina book. Okay, open it and put your letters in. Okay. Where's my letter? Now before I send it out, before I, oh that one's, hang on. Oh, I did the back. <laughs> Darn it. Can you believe I would do something like that? Yes. Good thing it's so easily fixed. Okay, so after all that, we have to put this back on here, on the right side. Okay, otherwise all the mail is going in the wrong way. Okay, so now when it opens, we have the mail opening this way, which is just how we want it. So that can go in there, or, or in here, doesn't matter. Okay, so that's how that works. And I will put something in there, which is what I started saying. I will actually put the first letter in there. So whoever gets the book will actually get something personal from me to last time the one the last book that I sent out I actually painted a little watercolor lighthouse scene and put a message on the back of it and sent that to somebody so this is what you can win if you send out and receive a bunch of snail mail in the next month so and post the pictures um, of the people that you give them to um, on on my Facebook learning with Lisa online page and then whoever has the most letters sent out um, with photos you can either have a photo of you actually putting it in the post box or uh, preferably a photo of that person actually receiving it and um, they can just have their hands with the, with the envelope stamped and the book and, and something open just to show that they've got it just whatever as long as there's evidence that you actually did send and receive something and then you can have this little book I'll send it out on the 7th of January. Okay, thanks for watching and um, I'll practice. So, <laughs> oh, take notice of the, um, the images. Like I did a photo documentation of the last one. So maybe watch that one. Have a look at those first too. All right, have a good day. See you next time.